think for a minute about the cartoons that you used to watch when you were a child. How many of them were about your gender? How many of them were about your relationships, especially your romantic relationships? Yeah, none of mine either. And yet, in the modern age, kids, regardless of how young, are being exposed to this constantly. They can't, they can't sit around and watch a cartoon without being exposed to this degenerate stuff. So there's, there's a clip going around from the Transformers, the cartoon, and it's horrendous because you can just kind of see the, the, the age of the audience that it's intended for, and yet they shamelessly are pushing this in kids' faces in order to normalize this. So this is what, this is the way that they think. Because again, when you're exposed to something as a child, you don't question it the way that you do when you're an adult. You just kind of grow with with that information throughout your life as this is this is my normal. You don't look back on it uh, the same way. So that that's the reason they're exposing children to it. Let's take a quick look at this clip and then we'll talk some more. My pronouns are they, them. Thanks. I'm Sam. I'm she, they, but you already know that. <laughs> Wow, what an amazing city. I'm sorry for how I reacted. It's just, sometimes the world can be a scary place. It's hard to know who's dangerous or not. Hmm. That's true, though disappointing. Hey, it's okay. I know I'm safe when I'm with my friends or other non-binary people. Yes, because non-binary people are never a threat, apparently. I mean, regardless of the evidence and all the different assaults that we keep seeing. Oh yeah, and the school shootings, in plural, that have happened and been caused by them. But, you know, they're safe or something. Non-binary? People who aren't female or male. Um, just, <laughs> I was told <laughs> that there's a difference between sex and gender. Remember that? When to, to be a man and a woman was a reference to gender, but to be female and male was a reference to sex. And therefore, you can't change your, your sex, but you can change your gender. This was the distinction that they tried to tell us was the case when we were trying to talk to them about, you know, science <laughs> and biology, specifically. But here we are. Um, back to male and female, who isn't male or female, they, they're completely intellectually inconsistent because their entire argument was bogus and even they knew it. Let's continue. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have assumed. I always knew my pronouns felt right, but what a wonderful word for a wonderful experience. Okay, so so that's that's the clip, and it's just it's mind blowing that they're obviously you know gearing this for young children, and <laughs> they're trying to make I guess transgenderism to use the, the their term into something that is better than normal, that is wonderful. They're not they're not just trying to, you know, represent, as they would say, but they're actually trying to actively encourage. And I think that the the whole thing of, well, I, I just never quite felt male or female, it, it appeals to every kid, because going through, you know, adolescence, who felt like they entirely fit in all the time? Like, nobody did. It was always the battle to, to try to, to fit, fit in or find your find your group or be the, be, be the most popular, whatever it was. But during that age of life, it's very common to not fully feel like you fit in. And that's what they're taking advantage of using the transgender ideology. And I've seen this over and over again, this thread of, well, if you don't fully fit in, maybe you're just not actually, you know, male, you're not actually female. Maybe you're 
one of the unlimited numbers of genders, and therefore you're completely special and your experience isn't like anybody else's experience. And of course this is actually a really dark line of thought, because the truth is that their experience is like everybody else's experience. That not feeling like you fit in is actually entirely normal and part uh, of growing up, it's part of the, the experience. But when you tell a person that what they're feeling, what they're experiencing, is completely un unique, that's very isolating, and it's the opposite of what these kids need to hear. And so that that's causes a spiral of depression, and therefore they get kind of pulled into this LGBT movement because they want companionship, and they've been forced into a state of isolation. This is how evil it is. It's, look how alone you are, and how different you are from everybody else, if you want to be acknowledged at all, if you want any sort of commonality with other people, then you have to come and join this this clique, which is also super dangerous, and then and then mutilate yourself as well. That's how evil it is. And so that's the destruction of these cartoons, and of course the education inside of schools is causing. So do be attentive to whatever it is that you know your kids are being exposed to, whether in some kind of school system or even on the TV, because you just can't to now anymore. It's sad that it's the, it's the case that you have to just kind of constantly monitor everything, but uh, that they're, they're making it very difficult for you to, you know, just sit back and, and not pay attention because your kids will be exposed to this stuff. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much!